Hey steampunkers, cosplayers, and anyone else looking to learn how to start sewing. My name is Lady Delatois. Welcome to my studio. I'm giving this talk today on behalf of COGS Expo Virtual Stream Con, virtual event being held this weekend on Twitch in lieu of the actual event, which will be held later on in the year. We will also be posting this video on our YouTube channel, Building Steam. That's the YouTube channel for my husband, BF Designs, and I working on our steampunk cosplay projects. You can also find me at on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash Lady Delatois and on Instagram at Lady Delatois. So my talk today is So Very Scary and it's about overcoming the hurdles of learning how to start to sew. I have been on a whole bunch of panels with some really illustrious, amazing costumers who were my idols when I started. And a lot of times, well, I mean, they're still my idols. That makes it sound like I don't respect them now that I've met them. They're great people. <laughs> I'm so honored to sit on panels with them. But a lot of times people ask the question, how did you get started doing steampunk? How did you get started doing cosplay? How did you start learning to sew? And a lot of times they say that their grandparent or their parent uh, was in the industry or was a very avid sewer and they've been sewing. I've been sewing since I was five. I've been doing this since I was 10 years old. That's great. You're thinking to yourself, my mom gets her clothes at the mall. My grandmother's hobbies are canasta and gin. Where do I start? Well, I'm here to help. This video is not a tutorial of basic sewing stitches and techniques. This video provides advice that you might receive from a mentor who is there to guide you and tell you what tools and materials you needed to just get started and guide you through your first experience at the fabric store, getting fabric and a pattern, which can really be full of quite a lot of pitfalls that stop people from progressing in their journey just because it's so frustrating and hard to understand. And there's not always someone there who knows either. So hopefully this can give you a bunch of markers along your path to simply get started on your sewing journey. You might be asking yourself, who is this lady? I've never heard of her. And she doesn't even look like she's a steampunk cosplayer. Do you even steampunk, bro? Well, you got a point. My bad. There, now I'm steampunk. Let's get started. <laughs> Section one, do I need a sewing machine? Yes, are you fucking crazy? You need a fucking sewing machine. <laughs> okay, initial purchases. Maybe you have a sewing machine stuck up in your attic that was handed down to you by someone in your family or stuck in your closet, I don't know what your life is. However, a lot of people, one of the hurdles, the first hurdles that they overcome is that they don't have a sewing machine. Um, I went out and bought the cheapest Singer sewing machine that we could buy. I think it was on sale. It was on sale for like $89, which is still not an insignificant amount of money to spend on something. And it was a terrible, 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 terrible piece of crap. So you can do that option if you are really concerned about having something brand new out of the box. However, when that machine did inevitably break because it wasn't very good, I went on Facebook Marketplace and I found all kinds of machines that had barely been used for less money than I had spent on my brand new machine. So I would definitely say that that is a really good option. You can also ask around, see if any of your relatives or family have a sewing machine sitting around that no one is using. Um, old machines are actually really good. If you take them to be fixed up, oiled, um, they don't have all of the fancy buttons and whistles and computerized devices that some of the newer machines do, but they are hard working 
um, machines that have lasted this long and will probably be still sewing after you are dead. You can certainly also make the choice to hand sew all of your clothing as far as the steampunk era is concerned. Might be considered um, historically accurate, although people in that time period had sewing machines in their home and a lot of clothing was machine made. And a lot of uh, sewing requires a certain amount of hand sewing. I personally have never constructed a piece of clothing entirely from beginning to end hand sewing because I'm not, not a crazy person. Um, there are people who do that. They're amazing. God bless them. Mm, I mean, no thanks. If, I mean, I guess if you want to be super historically accurate, you could do it all by hand and make sure that while you're doing it, you don't use your indoor plumbing or air conditioning or anything. Your phone. Don't use that phone. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, uh, so hopefully you can find some way, the least expensive way to get your hands on a sewing machine. Do not go out and spend a whole ton of money because you don't know if you like this hobby yet. And so if you've just spent this huge amount of money, then you don't want to spend a huge ton of money and find out that you don't actually like doing this at all. Sort of in this vein, I do want to talk a little bit before I talk about the next practical purchase that you should buy about the concept of stick to itness I've been teaching dance actually for 20 over 20 years and adult students are absolutely the worst. Not only do they tend to um, give themselves an out that they would not give their children, even though they've paid for the lessons, uh, they've paid for it. So they feel totally okay saying, hey, you know what, I'm just not going to come this week. Which perhaps if it was your child, you would say, I paid for that lesson. You're going to go take it. I don't care if you're dying. Oh, the other thing that makes adults terrible, terrible students, is a lot of times we've forgotten what it feels like to learn. When we're children, we're constantly failing and being encouraged by the adults in our life to keep trying. Um, good job, go you, that, you know, now do it again, now do it again, now try again. Yeah, that wasn't exactly it. You need to keep trying. You don't learn anything in a day. But the adults that I have taught are incredibly difficult on themselves and super impatient. The very first lesson, they'll be apologizing for stumbling over their own feet or not picking up the music or finding that it is, instead of being able to simply do the task in front of them, they struggle, they stumble, and sometimes they fail. And as an, as an adult, you've learned your tasks that you need to go through life. You know how to drive a car, you know how to do your job, you've put in your time. You, you, you've forgotten what that feels like, that feeling of learning how to do a new activity. So you need to get the fuck over yourself and know that you're going to screw up. The first thing you make is going to be terrible and that's okay. And maybe the second thing you make is going to be terrible. And that's okay too. Maybe it'll be slightly less terrible than the last thing that you made. But you have to have stick to itness. You have to make sure that you treat yourself and this new hobby that you've invested money in the same way that you would treat your child. If they asked to join a new activity and then a month later were like, you know what, it's really hard. I don't want to do it anymore. And you'd be like, I paid for that clarinet. You're going to take clarinet lessons all year long. I'm not going to let you give up because you need to learn that lesson. Yeah. You got to have that talk with yourself. Okay. So we're going to bring our stick to itness. We're going to bring our sewing machine that we bought that wasn't super expensive. And we are going to purchase some kind of instructional manual, manual say maybe sewing for dummies. That's the one that I used, and I was definitely a dummy. I'm going to show you here a picture of my first project and how it turned out so that you can be heartened in your 
future endeavors. So as you can see, I made myself a quite fetching potato sack. We all have to start somewhere. And speaking of starting somewhere, as I said, I did use the text Sewing for Dummies. That worked well for me because I learn best through reading and books. Some people are visual learners and there's a lot of uh, resources available on the internet and YouTube where you can find out how to do just about anything. I do recommend before you go to the fabric store and picking out, pick out your patterns and your fabric that you spend time with your sewing machine. Just practicing on scrap cloth, learning how to thread it, and how to do basic stitches. So, you have your sewing machine, you've practiced threading it, you've practiced sewing on some scrap fabric, you figured out how to get that tension right, and how to do a straight stitch, and you think you are ready to go to the fabric store and pick out that awesome pattern and get started you are wrong you are not ready yet there's a couple of the things you really should have before you get started with your first project really to um, eliminate any frustration that you might run into it's really important to have an iron it doesn't need to be a super expensive one it just needs to make things be hot um, uh, as you are sewing you actually will use the iron to press your stitches which helps set the stitches and really makes for nice cleaner work. I do use my iron quite a lot and it is a really necessary tool along with the sewing machine in order to create good clothing. Next thing you need, cutting utensils. You want to have scissors that you are using just for your cloth and not the scissors that you use for your paper. Oh my goodness, these ones are paper scissors. These ones are also paper scissors. I have them up here because I do cut paper Okay. This is a rotary cutter. It makes life easier. I wish I had bought one the very first time because I didn't for a while and, you know, discovering how easy it is to cut things with a rotary cutter was life changing. However, you do also need a mat to use a rotary cutter. So first project, probably not going to have the rotary cutter unless you already have a mat. So you, I have little scissors for doing cutting threads. These are my good, good sewing scissors, the more expensive ones. These are the first pair of sewing scissors that I bought. These ones are not super expensive. 10, I don't know, I paid for it, 10, $11. Uh, they are decent. Um, these ones were more in the range of $45 or something. Um, again, didn't start out with these, started out with these. Okay, so you definitely need to have something with which to cut. You also need to have a brain. I didn't bring mine with. What else do you need? This gun. No, okay, sorry. It's cool though, isn't it? You're also going to want to make sure that you purchase yourself some pins. You need those not just to attach the pattern to the fabric, you need them to attach the fabric pieces together so that they stay together as you are sewing them. That might seem like a gimme, but if you haven't done it before, and you don't have that knowledge, you buy everything else, you go home, you don't have any pins, that's not so fun, you gotta go back out. Okay, I think that pretty much covers what you need to get started getting started. Section two. Section two. I'm ready to make a thing. Are you though? Are you? Okay. You've practiced with your machine. You can thread it. Good job. You can sew a straight line without your machine going chunk -a -chunk -a -chunk -a -chunk -a -chunk. If your machine starts to make that much noise when you're sewing, as an aside, stop sewing. It will let you keep going. It will. But stop. Just stop. The minute it makes that noise, stop. Take everything out. There's going to be a big wad of thread, so the top's going to look fine. You're going to be like, everything's fine. You turn it over, the bottom is a big wad of thread. Usually what, mean, what it means is that the uh, top thread is not through the hook um, at the top of the machine, but I usually just take everything, I re-thread everything. I re-thread the top thread, I re-thread the bottom thread, 
and the problem is magically solved. I wish that I had had this piece of information when I first started to sew. It really would have avoided quite a lot of confused frustration as to why it was not working. So you're ready to go to the fabric store, pick out your fabric and your pattern. This can actually be um, the next major hurdle that a lot of beginning sewists run into. Going to the fabric store and navigating that experience can actually be intimidating, frustrating, and disappointing as heck. So hopefully I can give you some insights into that process that will help you out a little bit. I actually tend to uh, add a little bit of extra time into my estimate of time it's going to take at a fabric store because I'm usually spending time helping people who are wandering around looking lost because I feel bad because I was there at one point. So you go to the fabric store, you walk in, and you see that beautiful wall of different fabrics with its whole section of amazing beautiful fabrics and it calls to you like like Pandora's box no no you cannot do that first the first thing that you are going to do is you are going to walk to the back of the store probably past the cutting counter which is where they cut the fabric and find the table in which there are stacks and stacks and stacks of pattern books. And I'm here to tell you that in most of the pattern books, the costumes, if you are here for cosplay and steampunk, the costumes are usually in the back of the book. You're going to sit down at that table and you're going to look at those costumes. You're going to flip through. There's somebody you've always wanted to be. Maybe you've always wanted to be Batwoman. Maybe you've always wanted to make a steampunk TARDIS dress. You've seen those. Looks amazing. You can't wait to jump in and do that. You are not going to do that. That's a bad choice. I'm here to stop you from making bad choices. You aren't going to do that first. So, there is a section for skirts. That would be my recommendation. Find a skirt pattern, and you want one that says so easy or beginner or super super duper easy make this in 20 seconds you want that one this is the pattern for the first piece of clothing that i made and you can see right here it says yes it's easy this was a lie it was a dead lie it was not easy there was all kinds of complicated stuff going on up here. There so often is complicated stuff going on up here. But there was all kinds of complicated stuff going on up there. Um, so, yeah, it was not easy. This one here. So, this is a skirt pattern. It said, patterns designed for the beginner. Easy to follow instructions and basic sewing tips. These ones, actually, these McCall's patterns here that are in this line, they all look like this. They all have these sort of like little bubbles on the pattern envelope. They actually do have pretty good detailed instructions on the inside um, with explanations for things like they're written with the assumption that you don't know what you're doing. Not a bad thing because most patterns are working from the assumption that you kind of know what you're doing. And so if you don't kind of know what you're doing, you're going to kind of suck. So this one was, this one is in fact a pretty good pattern for someone who is just starting out. It's just going to give you a basic, simple skirt, different possible lengths. You find out how to put on a waistband, backslit, backslit, you know, there's some, so there's some good information there. Um, this one was not super, super easy and I have never again made it. Maybe I will make it again and see if I can make something better with this. So, although I certainly encourage you to look at the back in the costumes where it has all sorts of very complicated costumes and dream and pick out your next, your goal, where you're trying to get to, I would certainly say pick out an easy pattern first, be kind to yourself. So it is not just a question, however, of picking out a pattern, 
There's also a lot of information on the pattern envelope that, again, if you don't have prior knowledge, can be very confusing and intimidating. So I'm going to talk about some of those things now. So you've picked out your super easy pattern and you're all ready to go to the fabric section and pick out your fabric. <laughs> the hell you are. First, you have to learn how to read and interpret the instructions on the back of the envelope that tell you what and how much to buy. And honestly, these instructions were written by devils in hell. They are hard to understand. They are misleading and deceptive. It's like they want you to fail. So the first problem that people run into is sizing. The sizing is on the top of the envelope on a little, on the flap. The front of the envelope will say small, medium, large, extra small, medium, large, or more generally number sizes, six, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. And the sizing for patterns has not changed for a very long time, and it is pretty standard across the industry, as opposed to ready to wear, where it can change, as you know, from manufacturer to manufacturer. You never quite know if something is going to fit. So before you even took this little jaunt to the fabric store, you needed to get a tape measure, you needed to measure yourself, you needed to find out exactly what your measurements are. Sorry, forgot to mention that back in section one. See, there's a lot of information to know. It's hard to know what you don't know when you don't know it. So, a note about taking measurements. Be honest with yourself, okay? Don't lie. No one else is going to know. You don't have to tell anyone what your measurements are. Get out of your head about it. The beautiful thing about making your own clothes is that you can make it to your size. You can make it to your unique measurements and so they fit you beautifully. They're going to sit better on you once you've learned how to do this than ready to wear is. So if you were to go in and purchase a size six pattern and make a size six pattern, you're, and you're really gonna set yourself up for a lot of disappointment and you're gonna feel pretty bad about yourself unnecessarily. It's all just numbers. So make sure that you pick out the correct size for your correct measurements. That is your first task. The next thing that you have to do is you're going to look where it says fabric. Somewhere in the back of this, it's going to say fabrics. It gives a description of what the actual garment is, and it gives a suggested fabrics or fabrics. Um, that was the dress. This was the easy skirt we picked out. And it says velveteen, <laughs> really? Wool blends, velvet, and sateen. Now, see, this is what I'm talking about. Velveteen and velvet are not, see, the front of the, the, front of the pattern says, patterns designed for the beginner, easy to, easy to follow instructions and basic sewing tips. And then it tells you to purchase velveteen or velvet, which are the devil's fabric. They are difficult to work with. I do not recommend starting out there. They have nap, which is the raised portion of velvet that is um, hard to sew. You have to be able to cut it right. It's all got to go the same direction. I don't know what they were thinking there. And wool blends. So it says wool blends. Great. I'm going to go to the section in Joann's that's labeled wool blends. Oh, no, I'm fucking not because there's not a section that says wool blends at all. There will be a section that says suiting and that might have some wool blends in it but it's not going to have a section that says wool blends so good luck there sateen not satin sateen also not a fabric that i have ever seen listed you're not going to walk through the aisles and it's not going to say sateen so you can look at this envelope and then not be able to find these things labeled on the shelf when you go to the shelf, all of the fabric is going to be wrapped around a piece of cardboard called a bolt. It's a bolt of fabric. On one end, there is a sticker. On the sticker is all of the information about what the fabric is, what the fabric content is, you know, if it's 75% cotton and 25% polyester or all of that. 
and it's going to have how big the fabric is you know it's going to have the washing instructions on that so a lot of information on the end of the bolt of the fabric that once you've taken your fabric home with you you will never get to see that sticker again because it stays in the store and you take the fabric home with you So my suggestion to you is that you might want to take a picture of that sticker if you are still learning about fabrics. And on this little sticker, so it's going to say something like, you know, that it describes the actual, the color of the fabric and the fabric itself. And you're going to look at that and it's not going to match any of the fabrics that it says on this envelope. I can't tell you how many times that I've gone to buy fabric, especially when I first started out and I just didn't have a lot of experience with fabric where I could not find a bolt of fabric that actually coincided, unless you're making something with like cotton, yeah, cotton's easy to find. But if you're trying to find something specific like sateen, I've actually never seen sateen with two E's on a bolt of fabric. Isn't that fun? This is a great hobby. Who thought this was a good idea? I don't know. This is where the drinking starts. You might want to bring a flask with you. So you might be hearing me say this and say, well, I can't, that's too much. I can't, I can't do all this. You can do it. You can, and you may, it's possible before you've had your hand on a lot of fabric that you might make some bad fabric choices. It happens, that's okay. So you go down a little bit and it'll say, on most patterns, there's a bunch of different styles of the way that you can make it. And each of them are labeled with a letter. And then on the back of, I had to get my glasses again. I'm getting old. And then on the back, it says, like say, you know, this is style B. And then it says B here. And then you go to your size and you go down and it tells you how many yards of fabric you need to purchase. And there's usually two possible choices here, 45 and 60. That's what it says over here. It says 45 and a whole bunch of stars and 60 and a whole bunch of stars. And what that's referring to is the size of the bolt. The bolt can be a, um, you know, a certain, I mean, of course, the, you know, the, the lengthwise is the yardage and then the amount that it's wide is the amount is the number that you're looking at here 45 or 60 great where do i find that information i find it on the sticker on the back of the bolt on the bottom of the bolt right there that sticker we talked about that's where you find it so you're going to look at that sticker and it's going to say 54 inches <laughs> and you think i'm in hell and you are right so you don't have to keep putting that fabric back. You're just going to, it would be nice. I mean, sometimes, yes. So sometimes it is a 45 inch bolt and sometimes it is a 60 inch bolt. Sometimes it's a 57, you know, for funsies, you never know. So you have to guesstimate a little bit. If it's a 57 inch bolt, then I would just buy the amount for 60. It's close enough, right? So for a 60 inch bolt for a medium sized skirt, I need one yard of fabric. Nifty. If I was getting a 45 uh, inch fabric, then I would need a yard and three quarters because the fabric is not so wide. So you need more yardage. Okay, so you know what kind of fabric you're going to get. You know how much of that fabric to get. You are ready to go to the cutting counter and have them cut your fabric. <laughs> no, you're not. Time to move on to section three. I hope I'm on section three. Okay, so you picked out your pattern. You picked out your fabric. You know what yardage of fabric you need to get. What 
can possibly be next? Well, usually when you're making a garment, there are more layers involved than just the outside layer. Now, of course, there are some things that are only going to be single layer. You only have to buy one kind of fabric and that's all you need. And those are going to be very simple things. And maybe if you picked out a simple enough pattern, you are going to end up with needing only one kind of fabric, in which case you are done. You can go to the cutting counter. You can talk to that lady. She's going to ask you what you're making. You can have a nice little convo with her. However, there's more. Let me put my glasses on again. All right. Are you ready? You ready? All right. This says underneath all of the different um, versions of the skirt that you can possibly make, it says sew in interfacing, A, B, C, D. So all of the different patterns need to have something called interfacing. Do I need to buy interfacing? Can I just skip it? No, you can't skip it. Not if you want it to look good. If you want to make it something that looks like a pile of poop, then you can skip the interfacing. But that's not what we're doing here because we're the beautiful people and we make amazing things by the interfacing. So, where, what, what is it? Interfacing is a very simple, hmm, interfacing. This is sew and interfacing. Oh, how about that? I picked out sew and interfacing. How, how good am I? So it is a obviously not a kind of fabric that you would put on the outside of something and it goes on the inside of your garment, usually in places like lapels or waistbands or the fronts of coats to make them have more, make them have more structure. So uh, there are different kinds of interfacing. So in interfacing, you does not have any adhesion to it and you have to actually baste it to the piece of uh, the pattern piece that you are going to be making. There is also iron on or fusible interfacing where you can use your trusty iron that I told you you needed to have and make the interfacing stick right down to the fabric that you are using for your pattern piece. Fusible interfacing is easier Sometimes, sometimes it gets wrinkly. I don't know. Um, this does call for sew-in interfacing. So I generally, I find that sew-in sew-in interfacing is a little bit sturdier, a little heavier. This, for, there is no doubt in my mind that the reason this is asking for interfacing is for the waistband. So if you want a nice solid waistband, you would definitely buy the sew-in and then you just baste it to the pattern fabric. So that would tell you there how much of the sew and interfacing you needed to buy. Am I done yet? Am I done yet? Can I go? Uh, for this one, yes. However, a lot of garments are also going to ask you to have to buy lining fabric. The lining is like the inside. Does this have lining? Of course it has lining. <laughs> okay, so the outside of this is one fabric. The inside of this is a different fabric. And if you are making something that is lined, I love, I much prefer making things that have lining. I think that they sit better, they have better structure, and also you don't have to finish, you sew them together and then you flip it around so I have nice clean edges and everything is hidden on the inside. You don't have any hems on the inside that you have to take care of looking all messy and nasty. So I do actually very much recommend that you line things. Sometimes I even line things that don't call for lining just because I want to have that nice smooth finish and a better structure. Okay, so you need to find lining fabric. There is usually a section that is labeled apparel lining and you would buy the amount of yardage that it says to buy. Usually lining bolts are 45 so those are actually usually accurate. Um, so once you have gotten your fabric, your interfacing, there's usually a little separate cart that says interfacing and has all the different bolts of interfacing. It's usually across from the cutting counter and your lining fabric, then, then you can go to the cutting counter 
All right. So, great, we're done. <laughs> no, you're not done. Now you have to find your notions. Do you have notions? I have so many notions. Notions, you might know the word notions as being an idea that you have in your head. In sewing, a notion is all of the little things that we use to put together our garments that we use to close our garments, to finish our garments, all the different little pieces that go into making a piece of clothing. So the notions on this one are a one seven inch zipper, one hook and eye. Well, that's pretty simple. So you would have to go find a zipper that matched your um, fabric and you'd have to make sure that it was seven inches. So this says four inches. 10 centimeters. Okay, so this is a four inch zipper, but then when you get into the bigger ones, it might say seven to 10 inches or 12 to 14 inches. So you have to pick the one that's going to be right. If it's a seven inch zipper, I would buy the seven to 10 one, and then you're just going to have to trim it up. Um, a hook and eye, that's gonna be over with the snaps and the buttons and all of those things. And again, you want to buy that stuff all at once because you don't want to get to that point in your project where it's done, but you can't actually finish it because you don't have that one last piece. I do at some point here have to wrap this up. I would happily sit here and talk to you all day long. I definitely feel like I can continue talking about this for another 45 minutes because once you've finished those initial purchases and taken them home, there are further steps that you kind of need to take before you even start sewing that I had kind of planned to talk about, but this stretched out just a little bit. So maybe in my next video, part two, so very scary, is what happens after you get home. So if you go to our YouTube channel, Building Steam, Maybe in the next week or so, I can get that up on our YouTube channel so you can continue to learn how to progress in your sewing journey. I do hope that this video helped you out a little bit. It doesn't explicitly explain how to do the action of sewing or work your sewing machine, but it really does help you navigate some of those unseen obstacles that a sewing book is just not gonna talk about. It was my experience the first time that I went to the store, there were a lot of questions that I had and I didn't necessarily have anybody to answer them. So maybe tonight here, I answered some of your questions and you can approach your new sewing hobby with a little bit more confidence. Remember, it's okay to fail. You're gonna make beautiful things if you just have your stick to itiveness and you don't stop trying. All right, I'm Lady Delatois, signing off at COGS Expo, stream, virtual stream con. Have a great night. Mwah.